Hi everyone, welcome to Green Monk TV. Uh, we are talking today to SAP's Chief Sustainability Officer, Peter Graff, who's going to give us a quick demo of the new 2010 SAP Sustainability Report. So this is SAP's 2010 Sustainability Report, which uh, people can find online at uh, sapsustainabilityreport.com. The report lays out the three key areas of impact uh, for SAP. In the first place, um, SAP wants to become a more sustainable company, so we're talking about our own sustainability performance. The second section of the report is about how SAP helps customers to run more profitably and sustainably, so that's mostly a conversation about our applications and software solutions. And then finally, um, there is a section on how people at SAP drive opportunity for others through IT. And then certainly um, the last part, as always, when we put our report on the line, is that of encouraging interaction and dialogue between us and those who come and visit the report. And we call that section, Do Your Part, um, and that describes how everyone can contribute. Okay, great. Uh, can you show me some of the details of how SAP have done in the last year? Just how, how does it look on screen? Because it's very different from any other sustainability report that's out there. Exactly. So um, before we go there, the data that you we talk about is all assured uh, by KPMG. Um, and uh, there are two levels of assurance. And yes, this report is A plus from a GRI perspective. Uh, it's got the best rating that you can get from GRI. Um, it uh, complies with a whole variety of standards. But um, most importantly, we have not only done limited assurance to our greenhouse gas numbers, we've actually gone for reasonable assurance, meaning uh, the assurance company actually uh, assures that this is really our footprint. Um, and we do that because we believe in the future there will be much more scrutiny around how people are reporting greenhouse gas emissions. And that's what the greenhouse gas emissions look like. Um, you can see the trend uh, from 2000 to 2007. We have always increased our emissions. In 2007, we set ourselves the goal to reduce our emissions step by step back to the level of 2000 by the year 2020. So we have an absolute carbon target. Um, that is pretty aggressive considering that in 2000, uh, we had about 24,000 employees. And already today in 2011, we have more than 50,000 employees and we want to obviously continue to grow as a company. Um, you, can, you, can, um, you can also see that we have kind of flipped the chart uh, to uh, kind of visually highlight that emissions uh, is are seen as a liability of SAP, so they show below the line. And click, clicking on any of those bars redraws the kind of pie chart on the right. Exactly. So you can go and drill into the different years, uh, and you can see how the emissions change. For example, in 2008, um, we had 31% of our emissions um, from flights. Um, that also tells you that we include scope one, two, and three emissions in our, uh, in our calculation. Uh, that number dropped dramatically in 2009, given that in the times of economic crisis, we just don't service as many customers. So you can see that here. And then um, in 2010, the number continues uh, in absolute terms to be reduced, which is amazing given that we have actually increased our revenues by 17% in 2010 while reducing our emissions. Um, you can see that very nicely when you look at the um, carbon emissions on a euro basis. So we're now at 33.9 grams per euro revenue. And in 2008, that number was 45.6 grams. So in terms of carbon efficiency, we have dramatically accelerated and you can drill into different areas um, for example revenue in the americas uh, you can actually go and look at different scopes and include or exclude them in the computation so that's the benefit of having this kind of interactivity the obvious question that comes to mind then is if you are spending all this money on getting carbon out of your uh, system uh, out of your organization it, it must be costing the company a small fortune <laughs> yeah, um, that's uh, the, the secret sauce, I would say, because um, what we do at SAP is, from a carbon perspective, we have a very, very good idea about where we need to kind of um, uh, have activity in order to have a positive financial impact. So here you see the SAP-specific 
abatement cost curve that we have, which is produced with the help of SAP carbon impact. And you can see, for example, for every ton of carbon that we avoid using video conferencing, the company saves uh, 654 euros. And there are 39,000 tons that we can abate that way. So the width of every one of those rectangles describes how much carbon we can save. The height describes um, the financial impact. We have done a uh, analysis um, in terms of a business as usual case. So we extrapolated our carbon performance um, from the 2000s to 2009 further into the future in a business as usual case. And in comparison to that business as usual case, uh, Tom, we saved 170 million euros. Um, so um, 170. So it looks like uh, this is expensive stuff, but in reality, for us, we live the sustainability business case, um, and we are bringing in savings by becoming more energy efficient. So you're also going uh, beyond uh, not just in terms of uh, presentation and interactivity, but you're also going beyond what most other companies are doing as well by reporting not just once a year or not just once every two years as some companies are doing, but once every quarter. That's correct. And we've just uh, um, announced our first quarter results. Um, we have a 6% increase in carbon for the first quarter of 2011, um, which uh, we can easily track to a 5% increase in employees. Um, and, uh, you know, we have uh, had a very, very good performance last year in terms of carbon. So uh, we need to keep uh, on our toes and do the right things. Um, I want to highlight one um, element. Uh, which is our increase in renewable energy, which went from 16% to 48% last year globally. Um, and again, you can see the type of charts we use. Below the line, we have fossil uh, and nuclear sources for electricity. Above the line, we have renewable sources like wind and hydro. So there's a big shift going on between 2009 and 2010, how we source our electricity. And the beauty of this chart, below the chart we show how we do less bad, and above the chart, we show how we do more good. And the, the, the change is pretty significant. I mean, look, in 2009, um, we had uh, probably 16% uh, total uh, renewables, and, and the number has grown so much, while in addition, the absolute number of gigawatt hours of electricity we consume has been reduced to 268 from 301. So our strategy is to reduce the distance from this point to that point, and at the same time, shift the whole thing up. And are you doing any, uh, or have you plans to do any integration with your financial reporting? This report is actually launched uh, in an integrated fashion with our financial report. So for example, uh, if I go and look at the overall performance and I'm interested in revenues, for example, if I click on that, uh, what's happening is that I'm branching out to SAP's annual report. So there is no redundancy. And the way how these reports are designed um, uh, you know, there is, there is, uh, from a from a layout perspective, it's the same kind of branding, and so the two reports are interconnected, so we avoid redundancy. Um, we are not yet uh, in one report, uh, but we have taken a significant step because we are uh, launching these reports at the same time uh, on the web, and they're linked uh, with each other. So that's an intermediate step, but the trend certainly goes towards one report here. Last question. I'm a big user of uh, Twitter and to a lesser extent Facebook, as you know, and I, I see little Fs and Ts up there in the top right. I assume this means that I can take parts of the report and drop them into Twitter and Facebook, and I see a LinkedIn link there as well. Yes, exactly. So um, first of all, it's interesting to see that there are really uh, conversations going on on the right, and people can rate these, and you can look at things from a time perspective or most popular. Um, you can always share comments, and when you do, uh, you're asked to use your credentials in one of those social websites um, to go and leave a comment. Um, so, for example, um, I can now log in in Twitter uh, and use my uh, my uh, Twitter account here um, and sign in. Uh, at that point in time, I'm gonna I'm, I'm brought back into the application. Uh, now I'm logged in into the report. And when I share something now, I'm actually putting something out there. Uh, I don't want to type in this as a test, but when I do, um, you are getting the question if you want to 
tweet it at the same time as you leave your comment on the report. And in this way, uh, we get a lot of traffic because these comments go out on Twitter and on the web into Facebook and people come back uh, to the actual site. The other uh, beautiful uh, element of the logging in is that you can really ensure that your voice is heard. Um, so for example, um, this is our materiality matrix and it's a way for us to have structured feedback from people that go to the report. You can see how over time materiality changed. So things became more important, things became less important. And this is a real time feed. So I can actually go in, open this matrix and drag and drop points there according to what I think is important for me uh, and uh, for things that I think that are important for SAP. And when I go and save this, uh, very interesting things happen. Um, these, uh, this data comes back to SAP and uh, we can actually go and, um, and look at uh, uh, the aggregated view. Um, and that's what I can show you right now. So if I go to real time, this is the aggregate of all the hundreds of people that went there and communicated to us what they deem to be important and what not. And uh, people are really making up their mind. There's a lot There's a lot of yes or no. It's very clear what's in and what's not so important. Um, and we like that. The better, that's great feedback for us. There's one more thing, Tom, that I'd like to highlight, uh, which is the, um, the impact we have now taken, not just our own operational impact, but really the impact we have on a greater scale. And we've done some estimates um, in terms of what is the impact of SAP through its customers on the world. So for example, we believe that our, our sustainable supply chain solution help about 800 million consumers live safer and healthier. In other words, the product safety capabilities that SAP brings to the table, combined with the large amount of customers in the consumer space of SAP have uh, delivered significant value to everybody. And um, that's how we're describing that. These are estimates and we want people to comment to how we get to the number because we explain it in detail. This is how we get to this number. And we really would like more feedback from everybody in terms of how we measure that and how that could be improved. So if anyone has a comment, please leave it up here. Cool, Peter, that's been fantastic. Thanks a million for that. Thanks for coming on the show. Yes.